Hello everyone, welcome to Scorch Earth Toys at Anymoon.com's review of Happy Nets Chara Works, or Chara Works, Volumes 1 and 2. These are 1 144 scale VF1 toys, or more like models. Uh, they're kind of sold in Gashapon type sets. There are 10 to a box, 7 in each series. So if you bought one box, you were relatively assured you would get the full set of seven, although it wasn't guaranteed. Sometimes you had to get two box. Once you opened these outer boxes up, which you might not get, you can reach inside and there's an inner box like so. So this is volume one. You open up your box, slide it out to see which toy you got. So this is a Fokker VF1S with strike parts. You would get stickers that you could apply and you get a nice insert like so, which has a little bit about the character, a little bit about the Valkyrie, and then generic instructions on the back. When you got to volume two, there was much of the same. And get your box out from inside. This is what it looks like. Pull out the prize. Here we have a Max Genius style VF1J. Inserts were toned down quite a bit. You can just kind of see where you're supposed to apply your stickers. The instructions are a little more specific to the individual toy you've got. And here you can see the stickers that came with this toy. All toys come with a display stand, both Volume 1 and 2. They all come with uh, landing gear bays. Uh, these are the front bay doors. Uh, these are the back bay doors. Uh, this is the front, kind of goes right in this section when you have an open landing gear. Uh, and then you have the individual landing gears here and filler pieces for those bay doors. So that's what you get in either volume one or volume two, and obviously a gun. You have to have the gun installed to use the display stand. Uh, all right, let's take a little bit closer look at each series. Released in April 2007, volume one consists of Hikaru's VF1J, a Fokker Strike 1S, a Strike Hikaru 1S, Miria's VF1J, the special was this VF1A Max in Zentradi outfit, which was kind of unique. There's an Angel Birds VF1A and a mass production, aka cannon fodder VF1A. All of the VF1A toys in volume one and any unladen missile uh, VF1 toy in the later series uh, have movable wings. If there are missiles on the wings, they are fixed. Uh, hopefully you can see as I'm doing this the level of detail on these toys. Seeing the light there. Uh, lots of panel lines. There's even rivets at some point. Uh, very nice detailing. Also a, a pretty decent sculpt. I'll have line art comparisons up on anymoon.com. Uh, there are some weird things to it though. Uh, there's a little dent in the cockpit glass. Um, there's other little weird issues you'll see. Also, uh, as you can see on the bottom, some nice detail work in the landing gear bay doors. You get fillers to cover that up if you're gonna not use the landing gears. Uh, the fillers don't really fit as smoothly as one would hope. You might have to do a little bit of modeling to uh, get that to look as good as you would like. Uh, also not as good as one would hope. The heads don't settle quite as high up into the fuselage as they should. Uh, and then just questionable choices like why would you make a VF1J that's not a super, uh, does not have super parts, have reaction missiles to it. Um, just kind of looks a little awkward. You can also see the wing is warped on my VF1J toy, just ever so slightly. Um, build quality issues are definitely very prevalent. Uh, there's oftentimes a seam right behind the canopy. Uh, just lots of seams, really. Uh, things just don't quite fit as well as they should. Sometimes the uh, 
fuselage, fuselage will just separate from the rest of the vehicle. Uh, if you were a modeler, you can really make these things nice. Uh, expect to have some issues right out of the box, like some smears, of paint, that sort of things. Uh, usually not, you know, deal breaker style, but definitely some little issues that will grab your attention. Uh, check out anymoon.com for my close-ups. I'm sure you'll spot lots of problems. Uh, one issue that I would have liked to have seen, one, I'd like the canopies to stay on a little better. Obviously, that's a little hint. Uh, I'd also like there to be more detail for the cockpit. A little let down. Uh, if you were compar comparing these to the Doyushas, which was pretty much the only competition, uh, no metal here, but a ton more detail. A little bit less of it painted on. That's why you got those decals that comes with it. Okay, uh, let's talk about the landing gears. The landing gears are incredibly thin, especially the front one, which makes them incredibly fragile. I broke off one of my front sets of wheels already. I would not be surprised if I pu pulled these on and off uh, several more times that I would see more come out or more break. Uh, this landing gear just popped off. They don't fit incredibly well, but well enough that it's not going to be a problem generally. But yes, very thin, very fragile. So something to keep in mind. But again, if you were a modeler, you could fix something like a little broken landing gear. Not that big a deal. There also seems to be a landing gear bay door in the back that they did not include and possibly should have. Because right now, if you close these landing gears, uh, it doesn't seem like it would quite work out right. There, would, There's gaps. So, a little weirdness there. They did paint the little silver dot on the front of the front landing gear, which is a nice little touch. Uh, and overall, again, very nice uh, for this size scale sculpt. Alright, let's go ahead and check out Volume 2. Volume 2 was released in April 2008 for the same 4,500 yen for a box of 10 that Volume 1 cost. Uh, volume 2 features some questionable decisions as far as I'm concerned. First, you got two Super Valkyries, a VF-1A Hikaru and a VF-1A Fokker, or VF-1S Fokker. Uh, it's a little questionable in that Volume 1 has a Strike VF-1S Fokker, and Volume 1 has a Strike VF-1S Hikaru. So, there didn't seem to be a real need to include these Valkyries, but they're super popular, so why not, right? So a little boring, but there's nothing really differentiating these toys between them and the Volume 1 uh, toys that I just spoke about. The next thing you get are two Do You Remember Love VF1A paint schemes. You get Hikaru, which obviously would be popular, and you get Hayao, or uh, Kakazaki. Um, and Kakazaki is the chase figure, which is really peculiar because I don't think anybody wants his toy. So that was a little weird. All the VF1A toys also have a durability issue in their head laser. Oftentimes the tray that these things sit in squishes that. So a chase that was pretty pointless um, and a pretty boring VF1A toy. But, you know, again, it's Hikaru, so at least it's a popular figure. Um, so this one might have had some draw. You also got VF1J Max Genius, which uh, is a little confusing because the Volume 1 toys have reaction missiles on them, and the Volume 2 VF1J toy has no missiles at all. So Max would look a little puny next to his Volume 1 VF1J counterparts. But still, Max, popular. I get it. Then you get the two toys that probably, one of which, should have been the chase. Also, I mentioned earlier, sometimes the fuselage comes off. Uh, there should be like a dot of glue or something on there. Oftentimes, it does not seem to be the case. It just slides right back into place. Anyways, you got a fan favorite Minmei Guard Strike toy. Which, to me, seems like a clear front runner for what should have been the chase toy. Uh, this is a... Again, a fan favorite paint scheme, not one I'm particularly fond of. It's sort of an off-white with pink and lavender. Yeah. Comes with some nice decals, though. Um, I will have a scan of those on anymoon.com. Uh, this toy, really not any different than the VF-1S Strike Foker that comes with the Volume 1. 
The last toy is the VT1 Super Ostrich. Uh, it's a little bit different mold in that you don't have to have a gun on there because the Super Ostrich doesn't have a gun. Uh, it has the different canopy that looks more bubbly for being a two-seater. And it also came with, it's the only toy that comes with an insert of a plastic tree with the landing gears and such on there, including a spike that attaches to these super parts. So the VT-1 is sort of the unique beast, uh, probably one of the more desirable volume two toys. Overall, these things, good display pieces, fill little gaps in your displays. Uh, again, if you're a modeler and you wanna take some time on these toys, you could probably make them very attractive. This display stand's not attached very well. Uh, you can make them very attractive. As they are out of the box, you should expect there to be a couple little issues that you wish had been built better. Um, but that's about it. Uh, you know, the Doyushas have their, their charm in their die cast content and they're painted on detail. These toys have sort of the opposite charm in their greater detail in the sculpt and seemingly more realistic feel to them. Uh, but not nearly the quality of the Doyushas. So, visit anymoon.com for my full article, and thanks for viewing.